When it comes to coarse aggregate particles, we want to have particles that are crushed and angular. Those particles tend to interlock very well and will provide us a uh, stronger pavement when they're used in our asphalt mixtures. The way we determine how our fractured or angular particles are of our coarse aggregates is called fracture face count and it's ASTM D5821. This is an easy test to do. Uh, really all you have to do is look at your aggregate particles, determine if they have two or more fracture faces, one fracture face or no fracture faces. And we'll take our particles, we'll divide them in those three piles, and then we'll weigh each pile and determine the percentage by weight of our total sample. Or you can ask, also do it by particle count, where you would get 100 particles of the coarse aggregate that you're testing, and then divide them in their three piles and count the number of particles you have with two or more fracture faces, one fracture face, or no fracture faces. So I have my coarse aggregate here that I wanna test and you just pick up the particles and look at them individually. So with this particle here, we can see that this side is rounded, but if you look on the other side, you can see where it's been fractured, where it went through a crusher. For this particle here, we will label it as just one fractured face, because you got one fractured face on one side and then it's rounded on the other side. The next particle you see it's rounded and smooth on one side, but then as you turn the particle around, we have a fractured face on this surface, fractured face on this, and another fractured face on this side. So we would label this as two or more fractured faces. And I would make a pile for each one. This particle here, again, rounded on one side, we have a fractured face on this side and another fractured face, so two or more. The aggregate particle we see here, you see it's just rounded on all sides, hasn't been through a crusher or didn't get crushed as it went through the crusher. So that would be no fracture faces. Same way with the particle here. Smooth on all sides, so no fracture faces. Because what we're looking for, we're looking for our particles to have fracture faces. And it's good if they can have two or more fracture faces. The way specifications tend to read most of the time when it comes to fracture faces, it depends on where in your pavement layers you're gonna be using this ag aggregate uh, material. So if you're using this aggregate in the surface, the specification may call for 95% two or more fracture faces or 100% two or more fracture faces. So we're looking for these fracture faces in our coarse aggregates. Again, with this one, there's a fracture face on this side, this side, and this side, so two or more. And we would just take all our particles and go through them. It takes a little while to do this test, but it's not a difficult test to run. We can see this particle, one fractured face, and smooth on this side, so that'd be one fractured face. And as I stated earlier, the specifications read really depends on how, where in your pavement layer you're on used material. It may say you have to have 95% two or more fractured faces or it may read that you have to have 90% two or more fracture faces and 95% one or more fracture faces. And once we have all our particles in their separate piles, we would either do the calculation by weighing each uh, pile, divided by the total weight to get the percentage, or do it by particle count, where we'd get approximately 100 particles, divide them into their piles, and count out the number from each pile to determine what percentage out of those 100 particles is two or more fracture faces, one fracture face, or no fracture faces.